if you've written and edited your text and you've already created your illustrations, well, what next? Hello Space Cats, it's me Jules with a video on publishing your children's book. If you are thinking of self-publishing online or sending a file to a printer, you'll need to know how to use software to enable you to do that. If you've got your text, it's been edited and proofread and you have some illustrations, the next step is to scan it in. Or maybe you've already created your illustrations digitally and you already have them in your computer. Either way, you'll need some software to bring those two elements together and to save as a digital file. I am about to show you one way of doing that. Editing Jules jumping in here. I forgot to say that I had a bit of a nightmare making this video because I tried to make a screen recording so that I could show you exactly how I do this whole thing. But for some reason, despite four hours of trying to save in high def, it would only save in low definition, which makes it really fuzzy if you're looking at it on a big screen. So what I ended up doing was taking still shots of my screen and that worked out just fine. But if you want to have a sort of extra look at how I do it in real time and looking at the screen recording, if you're watching it on a phone or something quite small, it's fine. If you're watching it on a laptop or an iPad or something like that, it will be a bit fuzzy because of the low resolution. But still probably worth having a look at if you are at that stage where you want to crack on and get your book into some sort of software so that you can send it off and export it as a PDF. I haven't added that section to this video because I didn't want this video to be too long. But I have put up here in the cards a link to the video. Enjoy! When you open up InDesign, you will be faced with something that looks a bit like this. Now, don't laugh. I know this is a really old version of InDesign, but it will be pretty similar to whatever you have today. Over on the right hand side, you've got some very handy little menus that you're going to use, including the links, the pages and the layers. So open up a new document, not the book which I know seems a bit counterintuitive, but I always use the document. So you can just do control N as well if you're used to using hotkeys. And you get this little box where you can add in all your different dimensions, how many pages you want, the intent of your publication, whether you want it to be web or print, and also your orientation. Make sure you put in how many pages are in there and whether or not you want them facing pages. So here I've put in 32 pages and I've ticked that box next to it saying facing pages. I've given it my width and my height and I've actually got a preset for when I did my dog star book. So that's what I've used for this. And down the bottom there you can see your margins where you can add your um, bleed if you want to. And here we've got facing pages. You always start on a single page in this software for some reason. You can't start on a double page, but that doesn't matter really that much. Then you want to place in your illustration. So we'll just do an illustration to start with. So control D and that should then you can go in and find where your illustration is. Grab hold of it and then you can place it in that top left corner. It always grabs the top left corner. And you have here um, a blue line surrounding it and that blue line has got a red line underneath it. So you've got two things going on here. The blue line shows you how much space you've taken up on that page. So if I make it the same size as the actual page, you can see here it hasn't done anything at all to the illustration. To make the illustration bigger, you need to double click on it. And when you double click on it, it will show this red line around the edge now. And there you can enlarge it. Because I made the blue line the same size as my page, it hasn't bled over onto the next page. 
And then if you want some text, you need to go over on that left hand side, you'll see highlighted the T, that's the text box. You can draw yourself a text box and then you can start typing in your text or cut and paste it from wherever your text is, if you've got it on Word or another, another piece of software. I'm just going to be using the Lorem Ipsum just for the sake of showing you. And up the top there, you've got menus that show what you can do with the text. So you can change the typeface, you can change it from regular to bold or italic, you can change the size, you can change the leading and the kerning. So here I'm just going to highlight that and change over the typeface. Or maybe you want to get rid of that hyphenated word there. So highlight the whole thing and then go up to where it says AV with a little arrow pointing both ways underneath it. And if you go up upwards up the menu into the minus figures, then you can make sure that you get that word back on the line. And when you've done all of those pages, then you end up with something that looks a little bit like this. So perhaps now you want to save it. So you save as a, an InDesign document and then you want to export it, so that's Control E, as a PDF. So you can there save it as a, a I've put test book PDF and it saves it as an Adobe PDF print. I'm going to save it into a folder. And you come to then this box that gives you lots of different options. Unless you want it to be an ebook, then I'd save it as a high quality print and all of your pages, not just the range. And then if you need, if your printer asks you for the um, bleed and the slug or the mark, the, the printer marks, then this is where you can click on those and then they'll show up on your PDF document. The other thing that is quite important is you make sure that where it says document open password, make sure that is not ticked that little box underneath it because you don't, unless you specifically want to send your printer a password, you don't want it if you are uploading it to an online publisher. So make sure that's unticked. And then when your PDF is ready, it will look like this. It doesn't show you double pages to start with. If you want to see double pages, what you need to do is go up to the menu at the top there and click on view, page display and two page scrolling. When you've clicked on all of those, you'll end up with something that looks a bit like this. And there you go. Now this obviously is just a test for me, so I've only filled in these two pages, but you should have all of your pages and when it's saved as a PDF then that is what you can send off to your printer or upload onto KDP. So now it's over to you. Of course you don't need to use the same software that I've used. There are lots of alternatives out there, you just need to do a little bit of research. But at least you've seen how I do it and the tried and tested method that I've used for the last decade. If you'd like further artist tutorials, I have a variety of short courses that will help you. There are real-time sessions looking at painting, drawing and marker pens, among others. And if you're keen on producing your own book, there is a more in-depth course on what you need to know about self-publishing a book with illustrations. That covers making key decisions, how to make layouts and dummy books, rhythm and pacing, as well as several tutorials on illustrating a book and a look at the tech. You can either hop over to my website or join me on Patreon for more information. Go on, give it a go! Next week I am looking at a story involving a wolf, a grandma and a very plucky little girl. Until then, I am off to can a kangaroo. I will see you next week. Nanu nanu.